Now we're going to go find the second derivative and use it with respect to graphs. Um, first of all, when you have higher order derivatives, when you have f prime, it's a function itself, and therefore the derivative of the derivative can be found, and it's called f double prime. On page 633, you've got some different notations for the second derivative. But I just normally use the double prime. Uh, if you'll notice, if they give me a function y, then I have y prime, I have y double prime. If they give me g of x, then I would have g prime and g double prime. But we do need to use the notation because each one of these gives me certain information about the graph. Uh, actually, uh, after the second derivative, we really don't need to find derivatives, but anything after the first is called a higher order. And I think there's some problems on the homework where they just ask you to find maybe the third, maybe the fourth derivative. But let's go find, look at this particular problem. I've got a cubic. I found y prime, and I did my sign chart. So let me get my calculator. I've already put the first derivative in. I do have the second. I'll get there in a second, but I've turned it off. So let me ask it to graph. So it hits my graph in uh, two locations. Now if you'll notice, it's very uh, minute. If you remember, I said if you have anything within plus or minus 4, if you'll do a zoom 4 for decimal window, you get in closer and it's a little bit easier for you to find these. So I'm going to go see if I can find my zeros. So second trace for the calc menu. Let me do number two. Uh, I'm going to go for this first one on the left, so I'm going to type in zero. And I'm going to type in 0 0.5. Let's see if I can narrow in on this. And remember, I don't guess. So if I'm rounding to the hundreds, there's my 0 0.26. Let's go find this other one. So second trace for the calc menu, number two. So to the left of this one, I'm going to type in 0 0.5. And to the right, I'm going to type in 2. Hit Enter. So that's where I came up with 0 0.85. Now, with respect to my signs, to the left of my 0 0.26, my curve is below. So that's where the negative comes from. Between the two, it's above. So that's where my positive comes from. And to the right of 0 0.85, it's below again. Okay, so now what this tells me is this. We've done the first derivative back in section 12.1. I'm going to go insert some shapes here. So since this is negative, that tells me my slope is it's coming down. Okay. Here, it's leveling. Between these two, it is going up. Here, it's leveling again. Remember, I've got a horizontal tangent line at 0.85. And then to this side, it is coming down. So that's the general shape of this cubic that I've got. Now, with the second derivative, what the second derivative does, it tells me about concavity. Now, I can tell concavity here. Around 0.26, it looks like it's concaved up, and then somewhere between these two, it's concaved down. Well, that's what second derivative does for me. It tells me concavity, but it also tells me where concavity changes. So, let me get my calculator up again. Let me go back to y equals. I'm going to turn my first derivative off. Second derivative, well guys, do your derivative here. 2 times negative 9 gives me negative 18. Decrease power by 1. This is 10. So I'm going to turn this on. And let me go ask it to graph. Okay. I'm going for my 0. It should sound familiar because that's what I do in my first derivative. So second trace for the calc menu for 0. It's between 0 and 1, so I'm going to use 0 and 1. Now, I got 5 ninths. This is linear. You can set this equal to 0, and you should end up with a negative 10 over negative 18. 
which reduces to five ninths. Now there's something I can do in the calculator right here. If you do the following steps, second quit, go hit X, math, frac. For that instant, it will take that zero and it will change it to fractional form. So now, if it's positive, if remember back when you were doing um, your quadratics, if you had a coefficient that was positive, it's concaved up. So I've got, let me insert another form. I really don't have a parabola on this, but this is as close as I can get. So here's, this is concaved up. Um, on the other one, because it's negative, it's concave down. How about that? But I knew that from up here. So that just reiterates that. What I don't know is where this concavity changes, and it changes at an x value of 5 ninths. So the original curve is concaved up from negative infinity to 5 ninths, because, well, actually, let me get my curve back up here. Notice right here, from negative infinity to 5 ninths, it's above. That's where the positive. Guys, all this is the exact same thing I do with my first derivative. Uh, and after 5 ninths, if you'll notice, my curve is below, which is negative. So it's concaved up from negative infinity to 5 ninths and concaved down from 5 ninths to positive infinity. So information for, from the y double prime sign diagram, if y double prime is positive, graph of my original is concaved up. If y double prime is negative, then the graph of my original is concave down. The point on the graph of y where concavity changes from concaved up to concave down, or vice versa, is called the inflection point. This value is found by setting y double prime is equal to zero. And if you'll notice, I've got right here, this is the exact same process when we found critical values for y, since we set y prime equal to zero. Now, I went back to, these are parabolas. I got my first derivative and my second derivative. If you'll notice, it's positive. This is why in pre-calc we look at our a value, and if it's positive, then my curve, my parabola is concaved up. If it was negative, it's concaved down. So we could make that general assumption back in pre-calc because it has its basis in calculus. Now one more thing I need you to go and do. At the bottom of page 642, they talk about law of diminishing returns. There, they talk about it and there's an example, so I need you to look at that because there is um, a, uh, some homework problems and quiz problems, possibly even on the test, that talks about the law of diminishing returns. So, thank you.